In this video, I'm going to show you the specific way that you can use the five second rule to stop doubting yourself and worrying so much. Now, a lot of people will tell you, oh, just think positive or meh, try not to worry. It sounds simple, but it's not easy. And the reason why it's not easy is because it doesn't work. And actually, research shows that when you try to ignore your worries, it can actually make them worse. Look, I understand this topic more than most people because I struggled for decades, not only with worrying and self-doubt, I actually suffered from anxiety and panic attacks for almost 25 years. And in fact, I took Zoloft for two decades to control my anxiety. Using the five second rule, I've not only been able to stop worrying and doubting myself, I've cured myself of anxiety and I've been off meds for more than four years. I'm panic attack free and I almost never, ever worrying about anything. And you can teach yourself to do the exact same thing using the rule. First, here's what I want you to know. You're not a worrier. A lot of us call ourselves a worrier, right? Oh, I'm a worrier. You're not a worrier. You have a habit of worrying. That's a very big difference. You've allowed your mind to drift and linger on negative thoughts so many times. It's now a pattern of behavior that you repeat and you don't even realize it. And that's actually good news because that means that you and I can use the science of habits to break the habit of worrying and the habit of doubting yourself. In the language of habit research, the five second rule is what psychologists call a starting ritual. It's, it's a tool that you can use that will interrupt the negative thought patterns that are encoded in your brain as habits and trigger positive new thought and behavior patterns. The five second rule is shockingly effective because it works with all the latest research about habits. What I've learned using the five second rule is that I do in fact have control over what I think. And when you use the five second rule, you'll discover that you do too. Here's how you're gonna use the rule. The moment, the moment that you feel your thoughts drift, and have you ever noticed how worrying and self-doubt, they have a way of literally like taking you away from a situation. You can feel your mind go from the present moment to drifting to something negative. Maybe you're sitting at a meeting at work and uh, suddenly you start talking down at yourself and doubting yourself. It happens like that. But the moment that you catch yourself do it, that's a moment of tremendous power. You have a decision to make. You can either sit there and listen to the worry and listen to the self-doubt and let it hijack you, or you can make a decision to assert control. That's when you use the rule. You're gonna use the countdown trick, five, four, three, two, one. It's essential. Counting backwards interrupts the negative thought pattern. It's also going to awaken your prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that you need to override a bad habit and replace your bad habit with a positive new one. So every time you feel your thoughts drift to something negative, or you find yourself worrying about things you can't control, five, four, three, two, one, It'll switch the gears in your brain. It'll interrupt the negative thought pattern. It'll activate your prefrontal cortex. And you've just created a starting ritual that will prime your mind to accept a more positive thought. That is how you use the rule to change. Want to be happy? Build a life, not just a business. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel is created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something more inside you too. You've got Michael Jordan level genius at something. So today, let's live your best belief life and learn how you can conquer your inner self-doubt. Enjoy. Rule number two, focus on taking action. So we got a cool question on Twitter from Langley in Nigeria, and it has to do with something that we've been hearing from a lot of you about, and that is imposter syndrome. And particularly for those of you that are running a small business or those of you that have a side hustle that you're trying to turn into your full-time thing, imposter syndrome is very real. Let's deal with it right now. Langley writes from Nigeria, I'm passionate about film and cinema, Mel. I tweet and I blog about it. People are inspired by what I write. But when I'm offered certain opportunities, I clench up and suddenly feel like an imposter who will mess up and be found. I'm 36, I'm single, in a paycheck to paycheck situation and feel like I have wasted many years due to overthinking, self-doubt, and never feeling good enough or ready. How can I overcome this? Well, you can't. You can't overcome the feelings that are rising up, Langley, but you can take action 
despite them. That's a very important distinction that I want each and every one of you to understand. The things that you're feeling, clenching up, feeling like you're not good enough, feeling like you're not ready, doubting yourself, kind of spending too much time thinking about how much time you've wasted, all that, that's normal that we all do. You cannot overcome those thoughts because they keep rising up and they've become a habit and it's sort of a pattern. So I don't want you to focus on the thoughts. I want you to focus on taking action. Even though you doubt yourself, you are gonna feel like an imposter until you push through that clenched up moment over and over and over again. And then suddenly through action Langley, you're gonna see that you're not an imposter at all. You're actually the kind of person that pushes through and does what he or she says they are going to do. See, imposter syndrome grows and sticks around when you listen to it and when you keep thinking and when you freeze. The moment you take action, even though you feel like an imposter, you actually explode the syndrome. You kill it, you break it apart because you're not acting like an imposter. You're proving to yourself through the action that you know what you're doing. Now look, the feelings are gonna take a while to catch up. The first 16 jobs that you do, where you feel nervous, those nerves are gonna be there with you the entire time. Feeling nervous is normal, letting it stop you is a choice. I say this stuff all the time because this is what you're struggling with. If you suffer from imposter syndrome, it's not an issue of whether or not you have the skill. The problem is that you have a pattern of thinking in a way that stops you the moment you start to doubt yourself. If you wanna be successful in business, if you truly want that side hustle to turn into your full-time thing, you have to learn how to let the feelings of doubt rise up, but take action anyway. You've got to learn to embrace the fact that you're gonna feel like an imposter, but you, my friend, are the kind of person that moves forward anyway. You're passionate about film and cinema, awesome. Keep tweeting, keep blogging. When people write to you, when they hire you and you get that clenched up feeling, that's a great sign. It means you're about to do something really cool. That's when you're going to just recognize the feeling, five, four, three, two, one, take action like the rock star film and cinema guy that you are. I hope that that helps, but the only thing that's gonna help you with imposter syndrome is for you to not listen to it and take action anyway. Rule number three, improve your mindset. Now what I wanna do is I wanna talk to you about the three strategies that will keep you, the secrets to building an optimistic mindset. You ready? Excellent, here we go. Um, number one, the secret to an optimistic mindset. You gotta be maniacal about your intake. Negativity in here means negativity in your body gets stored here and negativity comes out here. It becomes this loop of negativity. And so in order to build a positive mindset, I want you to be maniacal about positive input. That means really watch your news intake. Do not be watching it every day. Get the facts, get what you need to know from a trusted, measured, calm, factual source, and then turn that off. Okay. That's number one. Number two, edit your social media. Anything on your social media feeds should be helping you be more resilient, more optimistic, more um, positive. Anything that you are following that triggers you, that is negative, that rubs you the wrong way. You know, one of the things that I've noticed I have some favorite celebrities that I have um, followed for a while because I think they're funny or I love um, just kind of their sense of humor. But there are so many people that I have muted right now because I think that what they're doing online is so freaking out of whack. Seeing people give us advice about quarantining from the back of their estates and mansions, telling us to donate when they're not saying they're donating, seeing this kind of tone deaf 
uh, celebrity thing going on. I'm normally not a negative person about that, but I have muted, muted, muted so many accounts because it's not doing anything for me. And you got to be selfish right now. You have got to edit your social media feeds so that your social media feeds are helping you build an optimistic and positive mindset. And so every day, the second I see some uh, mute, 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 unfollow, 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 because negativity in means negativity gets stored here, means negativity goes out there from you. You want to put positivity, optimism, tools, strategies, things that keep you laughing, keep things that keep you giving you things that you can use right now. The second you start getting overloaded with Corona stuff, mute that stuff, edit, edit, edit your social media based on what you need. That's number one, maniacal about your intake. The second secret to building an optimistic mindset is do tiny things every day that boost your mood, okay? So we're gonna build your mood muscle. If you can, move your body because negativity gets stored here and moving your body, we know based on the research, simply moving your body for 10 or 20 minutes a day will release chemicals in your mind that help you boost your mood. The second thing that will boost your mood is I want you to make a tiny promise to yourself every day. Just one thing that makes you feel more positive. Is it getting up on time? Is it eating something healthy? Is it only having one glass of wine or reaching for a mocktail? I want you to put one tiny promise into place. Put it into the um, comments right now. What's one tiny promise that you can make to yourself that you're going to do every day? It might just be that you're going to wake up every day, take a deep breath, remind yourself that you're healthy, and that's going to be the tiny promise. I want you to do one tiny promise every day because keeping a promise to yourself will boost your mood and make you feel more in control. Another way to build your mood muscle is have a zero tolerance policy for your own negative thoughts. Right now, as you edit social media and edit your news take and edit your negativity coming in from the outside world, do not tolerate negativity from the inside world. The five second rule is genius for this. Count backwards. The second that negative, five, four, three, two, one. Not listening to it. No, I am redirecting my thoughts. That's right. I am looking for the things I can control. I am keeping a positive attitude by focusing on things that I can control right now today. Got it? Good. The third thing that you need to do in order to build an optimistic mindset. You ready, everybody? Here we go. I want you to pick a small 10-week goal that you can control. Why am I saying 10 weeks? I'm going to tell you why 10 weeks. Because I think that we've got 10 weeks ahead of us of physical distancing. I think we've got 10 weeks ahead of us, if we do it right, of life in this weird state. And I want you to pick one thing, one project, that's it. For the next 10 weeks, that's your personal project. It's something you can control. You ready? Something you can control. We're talking about how to build the skill of an optimistic mindset. And part of an optimistic mindset is focusing on what you can control. And I don't want you to jump ahead and worry about what's coming in the future. I want you to stay in this moment with me. I want you to realize that if you took on one small project for the next 10 weeks that you could control, something you've wanted to learn, some skill that you would love to have, some deficiency in your resume or your experience that you could gain in the next 10 weeks. If you narrow your span of control to managing your mood, to being maniacal about the intake into your mind and working on a 10 week goal, you will be building an optimistic mindset because you will have weeded out negativity in from the outside world, which means negativity won't get stored here and it won't get expressed from you. You will have built your mood muscle by forcing yourself to move every day by keeping a tiny promise to yourself and by being 
absolutely zero tolerance for your own negative bullshit on the inside. Five, four, three, two, one, redirect your mind to something you can control. And having a 10 week personal project where you pick something and you use YouTube University and you use this moment of time where you don't have anywhere to go and you don't have social distractions, you got time to focus on yourself. These three things will help you build an optimistic mindset. Absolutely, positively guaranteed. Rule number four, make a decision. I think we're all flawed and that's the beauty of who you are. And instead of trying to make yourself perfect in every area, it's so much easier when you accept the things that you're terrible at or that are your weaknesses or that are the things about your wiring. Look, if I were diabetic, I would take insulin. I happen to be somebody that's wired for anxiety. No big deal. So figure out how to, instead of fighting those things, actually trick it. Because the truth is that you're never gonna feel ready to make these changes. You're never gonna feel like doing them, but you can always make a decision that's always in your control. Staying with somebody that treats you like garbage is a decision, it is. Staying at a job that you hate is a decision. Staying in the body that you are not proud of is a decision. Is it going to be easy? No, it's not gonna be easy to change, it's simple. Do a Google search and then use the five second rule to force yourself to do that stuff. Change comes down to five second decisions and this is why the five second rule is, is important for everybody to know. It's your job to push yourself. And I don't care if you're Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. or you're Michelangelo or you're Lynn manuel Miranda who wrote Hamilton, you will struggle with self-doubt. And everybody that you admire, everybody, and the list is the same for everybody. Oh, Oprah Winfrey, and I want to be like, you know, Tom, and I want to be like, uh, you know, Branson, and I want to be like Jay-Z, and I want, like, everybody's list is a Bill Gates, and do you know what those people do? They do not have the habit of hesitating. They trust themselves. Also, to make sure you're actually taking action after watching this video, I've designed a special free worksheet just for this video. The worksheet will highlight all of the lessons learned in this video, as well as pull out our three favorite learnings and quotes that will inspire you to actually do something. The worksheet will also give you space to write down what your key takeaways are and your specific plan of action to make sure you're getting results. If you want the worksheet designed specifically for this video, absolutely for free there's a link in the description below go click on it and start building the momentum in your life and your business i'll see you there rule number five build motivation you see what you need right now is you need to start building the motivation of your mind because motivation doesn't exist in your body it comes from up here and what i hear is that you now have an opportunity this is what the test is peter to train harder because you are capable of so much more. This is handing you a moment where you get to become an even stronger and more capable version of yourself. Now, does that mean that you're gonna be motivated all day long, uh, every single day that you wake up? No, but it means you've gotta have the mental fitness right now to continue to get up to show up and to dig deeper when it comes to your mindset, when it comes to your attitude, when it comes to your just knowing that you are going to get through this. And so this moment, everybody, it's telling you who you are. It's telling you whether or not you're the kind of person that shows up to a challenge and you're pissed off or you're sad or you feel depressed or you feel despair or you feel all of these things that start to take you down the drain of negativity. And what I'm here to tell you is that you are built for this moment. You may not feel like it. You may feel sad. Those are all normal feelings. You may feel negative. It's very easy to do. You may start to feel a little bit of despair. That's going to come and go. But this is where the test of this race that we're currently running lies. When those feelings rise up, 
and you start losing ground and you start feeling like you're not going to make it to the finish line and you start feeling unmotivated, can you dig deeper and remind yourself that you were built for this moment? Because one of the things that I know is that when the shit is hitting the fan, I guarantee you there are people in your life that are looking to you. There are people in your life, whether it's clients or colleagues or family members that are looking to you right now. You know what that tells me? That you're the kind of person that people rely on. And now is the moment in time in the race that we're all running where you got to teach yourself to rely on yourself. How do you do that? How do you build the muscle of the mind? It's very simple. Very simple. I didn't say easy. I said simple. The steps are very simple. To win this race and to build strength in this muscle right up here, you got to focus on the shit you can control. And that is what you do with your body and what you do with your mind. And the one thing that has made a huge difference in me, because you can see that I am showing up as a very different Mel Robbins than I've been the last couple of weeks. The last couple of weeks, I have been losing the race. I've been going up and down. I've been doing my best to stay positive, but I am now back in the race. I have now found my ground and found my footing. And it comes in focusing on what you can control. And you know what you can control? There's only one thing. It's what are you doing to make this day the best day that you can do? What are you doing to master this day today? Tomorrow, forget about next week, forget about what's happening this summer. This is a race that will be won by those of you who are the ability to focus on today and making today amazing. And so you know what I did today? Today, I did something I haven't done since the beginning of this quarantine. I got up an hour earlier than I normally do. Why? Well, because I noticed that throughout my day, I was feeling behind. Throughout my day, even though I was waking up, even though I have a morning routine, even though I was getting stuff done, I felt, even though I was doing all those things somehow behind. And I realized that in order to master my day, in order to be fully in control of what I'm gonna do today, I gotta make sure that when my ass hits this chair at 9 a.m. and my workday starts, I have fully taken control of everything that puts my body and my mind first. And when I was honest with myself, about why I was losing ground and why I wasn't feeling motivated and why I was starting to feel my own energy cycle down. It was because I was not taking the time in the morning to give myself the mental prep and training and the physical prep and training so that I could make this day, today, April 14th with everything that I got. And so that's what you need to do. Rule number six, use the high five habit. The high five habit is no different, okay? So I find myself uh, last year at a very low moment. I am standing in my bathroom. It's a moment I know every woman can relate to. They're in my underwear. Uh, I'm looking in the mirror. And of course, I am picking myself apart. I'm like, I hate how I'm getting really jowly right here. And I don't like how I've got these like big lines that are starting. And then I notice, you know, I've got this like indent right here that I don't like. And I don't like these like kind of marks right here that go this way on my neck. I've Everything covered them up saying, with I foundation. Never realized. Yeah. Like, and like, then this boob hangs <laughs> lower than the other boob. And, and I'm just picking myself apart because that's what I've been doing for the past four decades. That's what almost all women and even men do it too. This is what I'm finding based on the research of the book. And then as soon as my mind is negative about my appearance, my mind goes negative about my day. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, I, I forgot to text Lisa back. I uh, need to finish up that report. Oh, my gosh, my first Zoom meetings and I, oh, the dog needs to be walked. And now I'm going down the road negative about the day. The whole vibe is, ugh. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what came over me, but I just literally had nothing to say to myself. I really felt overwhelmed, just an average low moment. And I found myself, as pathetic as it sounds, raising my hand and high-fiving my own reflection in the mirror, braless in my underwear. 
it felt good. I put my shoulders back. I felt a little bit like, okay, I got this. And I went on with my day. The next day, there I am again. And my mind is going negative. And I'm like, nope, high five. And that's what the high five habit is. But this is just the beginning. The, the high five habit book is full of a bazillion tools. But I want to unpack this one. Mm. Because there's so much science here. And for women in particular, this is unbelievable in how it changes you and your relationship with yourself. So first, let's start with a high five. When, like think about when in your life you have either given or received high fives. What does a high five from someone else or a high five that you're giving to somebody else communicate? Um, you're on the same team, you're like in it together. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's also like, I think about it, you like give it to somebody before a big play, we got this. You give it to somebody when their attitude's going down. Come on, keep going, pick your attitude up. You give it to somebody in celebration. And so a high five communicates support and empowerment and partnership and trust and celebration. And it's so powerful and we're so good at giving all of those things to other people. Like you and everybody, especially women, we cheer for our friends, we create birthday parties, we buy people presents, we do work for our colleagues when they're overwhelmed, we help our parents out with whatever. We're so good at cheering for our favorite musicians and buying people stuff. Mm -hmm. We are horrendous at giving that same support and celebration to ourselves. In fact, we not only don't give ourselves support and celebration, we do the opposite. We tear ourselves down and we beat ourselves up and we pick ourselves apart. And every single woman I know is constantly saying, how the f do I put myself first? How do I do, how do I love myself? I know I'm supposed to. Well, I'll tell you how you do it. You put yourself first by doing for yourself what you've been doing for everybody else because that's how everybody else became first in your life. You need to start to cheer for, support, and validate yourself, period. I realize now that I'm high-fiving myself that I have spent the first 40 years of my life either criticizing my reflection or ignoring it. How sad is that? It's incredibly heartbreaking and yet ex extremely familiar to me. Yeah. And I think a lot of women. Yeah. And believe it or not, a lot of men. Mm. There's a lot of men that don't want to look themselves in the eye in a mirror and be with themselves because they're so focused on the things that they haven't achieved or the things that they failed at. And so they're ignoring themselves. Mm. They're not being with themselves. Mm. And so first things first, when you take a moment in the morning to just stand in front of the mirror and be with yourself, and then you raise your hand in a gesture that you have always associated with celebration, support, belief, and empowerment with other people, there's a number of things that happen that um, can be proven by research. First things first, uh, this is research out of Harvard. It's recent. Uh, they've shown in studies that simply taking a minute in the morning to get intentional about who you're going to be today and how you're going to show up changes your productivity, it changes your level of confidence, it changes how impactful you are as a leader at work and in life. So this moment in the mirror is not to be diminished. This is a moment for you to be able to take a moment and intentionally align yourself with who you're going to be. Second piece of research is from a field of study called neurobics. It basically means when you marry a physical action with something, a thought that's unexpected, you accelerate the development of new neural pathways. Mm. And there's famous studies that have proven that if you brush with like your non-dominant hand while you're thinking something, yeah. it sticks in your mind because you have to focus. Well, the same is true when you raise your hand and high five your own reflection. You see, you've been doing this for your entire lifetime. So there's already subconscious programming here, Lisa. The second that you raise your hand like this, it is so programmed in your mind to associate belief, cheering, empowerment, celebration, you know, with the high five itself, that it's impossible to go, 
God, I hate my neck. Mm. Boy, is that cellulite ugly. You can't do it because this part of the mind immediately takes over and does all the positive stuff with a high five. It's crazy. Try it tomorrow morning. You will not be able to criticize yourself. Now there's another piece of research around this, which is, you know, when you do a high five, we did one the first one we did, right? right? We didn't quite hit each other in the right, like, <laughs> good smack. So what did we do? We did it. Correct. Because a good high five requires you to be present oh. and intentional. Isn't that cool? Yeah. All of that and a little me. high five. Mm. And so what I started to notice was that I was in real time shifting my relationship to myself. Instead of criticizing the woman I saw in the mirror or ignoring her, I was developing a partnership, a trust, a sense of self-validation, a I have my own back. I see you, Mel Robbins. We're going to have a great day today. We got this. No matter what it is that life is going to throw at us, you got this. That's how it all started. And then, of course, I put it on my story after a couple weeks of doing it, and people around the world started to post them pictures of themselves doing it, and then all of their stories started rolling in about the difference that it was making. There was one woman that said that, She's been struggling with dysmor body dysmorphia for 20 years. Cannot look in the mirror. And after five days of doing this, can stare at herself in the eyes with a grin. Five days. Five days. And the reason why is because of the lifetime association mm. that you have with doing this for other people. So when you try this tomorrow, here's what I want um, you to do. Stand in front of your bathroom mirror and take a moment and just be with yourself for a second. And then if there's resistance to raising your hand and high-fiving your own reflection, what is that resistance? Rule number seven, control the gap. The question is, how do you deal with the anxiety that comes from waking up and being on a roll and realizing that when you're making things happen, it's easy to look back and realize how much of your life you wasted. And that makes you present to how potentially little time you have left and how much there is to do in the little time that you have. I can so relate to this, so relate to this. The, the few things I wanna say about this is that I don't think that our experience of feeling anxiety about getting it all done before your life is over, getting it all done in the time that you have. I don't think it's unique. I think that that is something that starts to happen when you feel like your life is on a roll and you're not present to misery, but you're actually present to power and joy and all the cool possible things that you could do. Does the anxiety or how do you make the anxiety go away? I don't think you can. I think that that is a very normal thing to feel when you're a big thinker and you become present to the fact that when you put in the work and when you focus, you really are capable of creating just about whatever you want in your life. And that's both empowering and daunting and terrifying as hell. And so you can't get away from that anxiety, but you can respond to the trigger. I often feel what you're talking about when I'm on an airplane. And maybe it's because I really I feel very vulnerable and out of control when I get on a plane and I click the buckle and I realize this puppy could go down. And then I think about, okay, I spent 49 years here. There's so much more I wanted to do. So I can relate to this. So there's two things to this. One is being present to time passing and the fact that we're all gonna die and that your life is a gift. When you get present to that, that's the biggest motivator on the planet. And when you feel one of those moments, what I do is I shrink it down and I try to find something in this moment that I'm incredibly grateful for so that if it were to end right now, then all would be well. I think about the sunset I'm looking at. I find a picture of my kids and my husband. I think about you know the lives that have been touched by the five second rule and that gratitude in the moment allows my mind to not go psycho thinking about the big vastness around life and those big topics. So that calms me down immediately. That's number one. Number two, I think a slightly different question than 
Um, it's probably anxiety, but I think it has more to do with momentum and how when you start to get unstuck and you start to see things happening, you'll notice that things feel like they start moving faster, as if you are on a treadmill and somebody has secretly come up and turned it up on you. And there are days where we're moving through our day like this morning was one of them. We're getting ready for this live training and all of a sudden I caught myself almost about ready to hyperventilate because I wasn't present to this. I was present to what happens when we have a thousand people show up and where are we gonna hold? <laughs> you know, you kind of speed it up on yourself. So when that happens, I know that I'm in the future, five, four, three, two, one, I need to be right here and right now. And that when you start having big things happen and when you start feeling unstuck and when things start moving, the momentum, you know, because an object in motion tends to stay in motion, your anxiety will make it roll faster. That will not make you effective. You have to slow it down immediately. Just in the case of getting overwhelmed by the big themes in life, when you start to feel like things are <gasps> going too fast, oh my God, oh my God, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough time. No, yes, you do. Slow it down, okay? You know, I'm always looking for new ways to explain the power of the five-second rule and the power of five-second decisions. And I read something that Tim Ferriss said that really resonated with me. And he had this one line buried in a podcast somewhere that just jumped out and it's, it's, it's stuck. And what he said is he said something about how there's a gap between the world and the things that trigger you and your response. And your entire life is that gap. When you start to, this is not what he said, he I kind of identified this gap and I, of course, intrinsically was like, well, absolutely, that's the five second window between instinct or stimulus and your reaction. And when you start to understand that your whole life plays out in this five second gap and that there's a gap that's five seconds long between fear and courage and there's a gap that's five seconds long between self-doubt and confidence. That is your life. And what's super cool about understanding that your whole life is inside this gap is it's so small, everybody, that you have the ability to control it. Life's always gonna throw triggers at you, and there will always be all kinds of cool things that inspire you, your wisdom, and you get to choose what happens in that gap. Do you succumb to an excuse, or do you push yourself forward? When you start to speak up in business, You'll be shocked at how you start to speak up in your relationships. When you start to make hard phone calls, whether it's in a selling situation, you'll be surprised at how you'll start to close the gap and have hard conversations in your personal life. And so that gap is everywhere and it's the same everywhere. And when you start to go to work in controlling how you live in that gap between stimulus or idea and your response, that's where the magic is. And that's what you're experiencing. Rule number eight, end procrastination. We all procrastinate. We avoid the things that we know that we need to do, and then we spend the rest of the day beating ourselves up. It's amazing. Actually, it sucks, doesn't it? So how do you stop procrastinating? Oh, simple. Just nail yourself to a chair. That's what you do. You tell yourself no booze until you get it done. That works. No, it doesn't. The reason why these things don't work is because most of us don't even understand what procrastination is. I know I certainly didn't. The reason why you procrastinate is not why you think. Procrastination has nothing to do with work. Procrastination is a stress reliever. That's right. It's a tool that you use to give yourself relief from stress that you feel. And the stress that you may be feeling right now might be stressed about money. You might be stressed about your health. Maybe you're stressed about something going on at work or about a relationship that you're in. And the way that this relates to procrastination is you're stressed out, you got work you know you need to do, but instead of doing it, you go online or you watch the highlights of last night's game or you waste an hour looking at Facebook. And when you do that, when you avoid work, it makes you feel good, but just for a minute. See, this is where we get procrastination all wrong. A lot of people think procrastination is about willpower. It means that you're lazy has nothing to do with that. It's all about your stress. That's why your work ethic or discipline, that's not, that's not gonna solve this either. The key to stopping procrastination, number one, is understanding what it is. 
it's a way that you deal with stress. And number two, it's about five second decisions that stop the cycle of procrastinating. Because when you change your decisions, you're gonna change everything. And here's how you're gonna use the five second rule to do it. When you catch yourself procrastinating, or you feel yourself starting to avoid what you need to do, use the rule. Five, four, three, two, one, activate your prefrontal cortex and then acknowledge. Acknowledge that you feel stressed out. That's the first piece. Then you're gonna use the five second rule to just get started. That's it, for five minutes, that's all I'm asking. Force yourself, I'm stressed out, I get it, but I'm gonna work for five minutes. Five, four, three, two, one, sit down and get started. After you've worked for five minutes, give yourself a break. Watch all the cat videos you want, I don't really care. The point here is that this is a way that you can use the five second rule in combination with research about beating procrastination that puts you in control of your decisions. Stacy found that when she used the five second rule to improve her relationship with herself, there was an amazing result. She stopped procrastinating. In her words, your rule has helped me grow in ways I never thought possible. I no longer procrastinate on anything. And the same is gonna be true for you because when you understand that procrastination is something that you do when you're stressed, and you also understand that the secret to beating procrastination, which is a habit, is to just get started, now you can use the five second rule to leverage all the research that will help you end the habit of procrastinating once and for all. Rule number nine, infuse your days with celebration. I believe with all of my heart and being that every man, woman, child, person, grandparent, everybody should infuse their days with habits of celebration and self-confidence. And the fastest and easiest and most science-backed way to quickly start to change how you see yourself is by adopting a simple habit of high-fiving your reflection in the mirror every single morning. Now, I know exactly what you're thinking. Are you serious, Mel Robbins? That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. I know, I know, I know it sounds dumb, but the reason why your first instinct when you think about waking up, whether you're in your robe or your underwear, or your PJs or your birthday suit and walking into that bathroom and having a moment with yourself and raising your hand and high-fiving yourself is because your self-confidence is in the gutter. You believe some garbage about yourself. You think you're a bad person or you're unworthy or you're ugly or nobody likes you or how about this one? This was the story of my life. I have f***ed up my life so badly, I might as well just flush it down the toilet. You have some narrative in your mind that is so negative that when you look in the mirror, you see somebody worth trashing. You see what's wrong. You pick apart your appearance. And I want to reverse that because here's the deal about self-confidence. Self-confidence begins with you. You realize the word self is in there, right? I can't give you confidence. I can give you a little boost. I can give you tools. I can encourage you. But confidence is forged in fire. It's something that's within you. And here's the thing I want you to realize about confidence. You are a confident person. That's why you miss feeling that way. You can only miss what you know. You've just been blocked from the feeling of it. And wherever you are right now in your life, I'm telling you, confidence is in there. You just got to figure out how to tap into it. And you've been building confidence all along, by the way. Every time that you have fallen on your face or you've tried something and failed or you've gone out and thought you found the love of your life and then your heart's broken and then you pick yourself up again and then you dust yourself, you're building confidence the entire time because confidence is not built on the high days. Confidence is built on the low ones. Confidence is built when you are struggling. Because when you see yourself go for something and fall, when you see yourself try and get knocked down, when you see yourself stand back up after getting abused or traumatized or discriminated against and moving ahead, you are building 
this reserve within yourself where you know you can rely on yourself, you know you can face hard things and you can keep moving forward, you know you have your own back. So it's in there. Your life has been helping you build it. Now you got to just dig in and tap into it and use it to shut that critic up in your head. So the way you're going to do that is every morning, I'm not kidding, you're going to raise your hand in the mirror and high five yourself. Look at how many people are doing this. You're not the only one. For five mornings in a row, I want you to high five yourself. And when you do this, I want you to use the hashtag high five challenge. You know what's happening when you raise your hand up in the mirror? You are taking the lifetime positive association that you have with cheering for other people, believing in other people, uh, celebrating other people, saying let's go to other people, and you are marrying that positive association with your reflection. It is impossible to raise your hand in the mirror and go, I suck. You can't do it. Because your brain and the subconscious sees this and thinks, let's go, I love you, I believe in you. And when you do this every single morning, something incredible happens. First of all, you're not gonna leave your bathroom feeling like you're dragging a boulder. You're gonna leave there feeling like the wind's at your back. Secondly, you're gonna have spent the morning, the first thing in the morning by taking a moment and being with yourself and not seeing your face and picking yourself apart, but actually seeing the person that's underneath the skin, the soul that's behind the face. You are going to shut the critic up. You're gonna silence your to-do list. And when you raise your hand like this, it also prompts you to think about the game you're playing. So now you got a moment to be like, oh yeah, yay me, I'm still here. I can make today a good day. In fact, what game do I wanna play today? Just for me. So that's the first thing that you're gonna do. You're gonna high five yourself, take the high five challenge, which is high five yourself five days in a row in the mirror, take a photo of it, post it on your story, tag me so I can cheer for you and start to notice what happens. Something weird happens by day four, when you get out of bed, you're gonna have this weird feeling that you've never had. You're gonna feel like you're looking forward to seeing yourself in the mirror because something weird happens when you start to really be present with yourself. When you normally walk in the bathroom, and you ignore yourself, you're alone. And I think a lot of us feel like we're alone in our lives. When you start to see yourself, you literally, oh, hey, hi there, Mel Robbins, how you doing? You now, as you look forward, oh, hey girl, how you doing? Hi, Mel Robbins. Oh, hey, let's go, I believe in you. Gonna have a great day. It's almost like when your neighbor waves to you. You're seeing yourself. You know, now that I've been doing this for a year, I don't feel like I'm alone. I feel like I've got myself and I've got my own back. I feel like this person that I see in the mirror is the one person that's gonna be with me for my entire life. So I better cheer for her. I better celebrate her. I better encourage her and love her. And that's what you're doing when you do this every morning to yourself. And there are mornings where I stand in my underwear at my bathroom sink and even I don't have a word to say to myself, but I can always do this and it always lifts my mood. And it is creating that deep connection within me to myself. And that's what builds your confidence. Confidence is being comfortable in your own skin. Confidence is knowing that you have your own back. Confidence is knowing that you can face something. Confidence is believing in your ability to face or survive or try something and be better. And confidence is being willing to try. And all of those things happen when you raise your hand every single morning. The second thing that you should do is um, you gotta be honest with yourself. If there are things about your appearance that are within your control, whether it is the shape that you're in, whether it's the health choices that you're making, whether it's how you take care of yourself in terms of self-love, and you're not taking action in those areas, the lack of action says to your brain, you don't care about yourself. And so what I want you to do is pick one thing, one behavior that you could do every day, the high fives, one of them, pick another one. And I want you to practice doing it. And it's a behavior. If you think about the person that you want to become, what's that person do every day that you don't do right now? And when you start to do the thing that the person you wanna become is doing, 
you leverage something called behavioral activation therapy. And that is a whole body of research that says when you act like the person you want to become, it's the most powerful way to change a habit. It's even uh, better therapy than uh, talk therapy because the action proves to your brain that you're becoming that person. You're seeing the change through the action. And so then the brain catches up and starts to relate to you like a person that's confident or a person who adores their appearance or a person that celebrates themselves exactly as they are. And rule number 10, the last one before some very special bonus clips is stop victimizing yourself. I love myself because I feel comfortable in my own skin. I love myself, everybody, because I don't label myself as a bad or selfish or broken or whatever person. I just encourage myself. I give myself compassion and I work hard every day to maintain that kind of relationship with myself. I have truly stopped victimizing myself. And I have empowered myself by encouraging and being compassionate with myself. And you're meant to feel this way about yourself too. This is how you're meant to feel. You're, you're meant to feel comfortable in your own skin. You're meant to feel proud of yourself. You're meant to feel celebrated and encouraged by yourself. And look, I still don't live on the right street. I still don't belong to that country club. I can't go back and redo my college and my law school years. But here's what I can tell you. You can break the habit of beating yourself up over the past. You can break the habit of constantly victimizing and bashing yourself. You can break the habit of labeling yourself with these horrible labels and indicting yourself by saying you are this way. No, the behavior that you engaged in may have sucked back then, but you don't suck. You're just a human being and you're figuring things out. And now that you know, what you need to do better, you can do better. I'm gonna teach you a mindset hack that if you can learn to apply, will help you eliminate your self-doubt, your fears, your insecurities, and step forward confidently into whatever situation you get yourself into. And it's this, you teach yourself that you can learn anything. You can learn anything. You may not have the answers right now. You may not know how to do the crazy thing that you want to do. You've got big goals, big, big dreams, big ambitions. You want to do something big. That's why you're watching this channel, right? You're part of Believe Nation. You want to do something big with your life. I love it. You don't know how to do it. You teach yourself, I can learn anything. Because what we often struggle with is you want to do something, you know you can't do it yet, and then you associate with that, I suck. I can't do something, so I suck. And that attack on your self-worth, on your self-confidence, on your self-esteem prevents you from actually going off and creating something amazing, right? I think, I think you're a genius. I think you have Michael Jordan level talent at something. I believe that. I don't just say it in videos. I believe that that's true. So whatever you're stuck on, instead of making yourself feel like you suck, that you're not good enough, that you're not capable of it, understand that it's just a skill set that's missing. The difference between where you're at right now and where you want to be is the skills that you acquire and then the action that you're taking. You're willing to take action. The problem is you probably don't have the skills yet to be where you want to be. That's okay. You tell yourself, I can learn anything. Learning becomes your superpower. I had a guy on my Instagram live not that long ago and he was talking about becoming a digital marketer and he was asking me what place do I sign up for a degree for digital marketing and, and is it worth getting a degree for digital marketing because I want to I want to be a digital marketer I want to sell my digital marketing services to entrepreneurs there are some fields where having a degree is really important digital marketing is not one of them going to I don't even know if you can get that in university but going to take somebody's digital marketing certification is not going to be helpful for you in terms of getting new clients. You might learn some new skills that you can use to get new clients, but he was putting too much stock in the paper. His belief was in the paper that because he was going to get this certification that says that he was a digital marketer, that that would help him get more clients. Now, if you're going to get a law degree or an accounting degree or something official, you know, professionals and great. Yes. You can't become a lawyer without going to law school, right? But digital marketing, if they're teaching out of school, it's already outdated. Digital marketing is changing on the fly. Look at what I'm doing on my YouTube channel. 
if I was to teach a course at a YouTube conference a year ago, it would be different. That's why in my YouTube growth bootcamp, I update it constantly with the new things that I'm learning because it changed from one year ago. Textbooks are written like two, three, four, sometimes five, six longer years ago. So apply the digital marketing, it's already out of date. But the problem with the guy who called into my IG Live was his faith, his trust was in the paper. That having the paper, having the degree would help him get credibility and close clients. His trust, your trust, your faith needs to be in yourself. It needs to be in you and your ability to learn. Not in your abilities that you have right now because you don't have the abilities yet to do the thing that you wanna do. You're not capable yet. If you were capable, you would have done it. You're not ready yet, that's okay, but you're able to learn. You, you, you can learn anything. So whenever you're in fear and insecurity, in doubt, you're not sure what to do, don't take it personally. Don't say, I suck as a human because I don't have this skill set. You can learn anything. Remind yourself of it. And then you need to create a customized program for you. You need to create your own university, your own learning program, so that every day you're slowly acquiring that skill, that knowledge set that you're missing. It's why I created the 254 series where every day for 254 days, you get a new video on a topic that if you want more confidence, if you want more self-love, you want more motivation, you wanna be a writer, we've got lots of different topics. There's hopefully something there for you, but even though I may, not have, I may not have made it yet, right? I made a whole bunch and they're free for you, but if I didn't make it, you go make your own. My YouTube channel is my own, that every day I want more belief in my life and so I created the channels for that. And hopefully that spreads and you guys like it, you're getting more belief with every video too. But you need to create your own program. Every day, whatever the skill set is that you wanna learn, that is the only gap between where you are and where you wanna be, because you're willing to take action, you just don't have the skill sets yet but you're willing to learn and you're able to learn anything. You can learn anything. That needs to be on loop in your head. I can learn anything. I don't know how to do it yet, but I can learn anything. And then apply it. So every day, what are you gonna be learning? Every day, what video are you gonna watch? What book are you gonna read? What podcast are you gonna listen to? How are you gonna learn? Who are you gonna reach out to? Who's done the thing that you wanna do and how can you learn from them and apply it? Every day. It's, there's never been more information out there. There's never been more thought leaders, experts, people who've succeeded sharing their tips, their advice, their knowledge, their feedback. And you can start for free. Before you go and hire somebody as a, as a coach or you drop thousands of dollars on somebody's mastermind, consume their content for free. YouTube videos are free. Podcasts are free. Buy their book. It's gonna cost 20 bucks, 25 bucks, right? Invest small. Make sure you're getting knowledge that helps. Make sure you're getting knowledge that when you apply it works and then you can start spending more. But you need to see a return on investment for every dollar you put in, for all the mentors that you pick, your time and the money that you're putting in. You're a genius. I, I, and I, you know, I'm a little frustrated because I love you and I wanna see you win. And I see so many talented people in Believe Nation with great ideas, great ambition and great heart. Great heart, like you wanna do great things for the right reasons and serve the world. You just haven't learned the skills yet. And so you remind yourself, I can learn anything. Whatever problem in front of me right now, I don't have the skill sets yet. Then I can learn anything. Self-improvement is the answer to whatever obstacle is staring you in the face right now. The only difference between you and greatness is the willingness to grow and improve. It's not talent, it's not smarts, it's the willingness to improve yourself. The difference between you and Tony Robbins is he has spent more time constantly improving himself than most people on the planet. Here's a guy who had multiple fathers growing up, had an abusive mother who at 17 he had to run away from home so he could become a janitor and never go to college. He then decided to be a success. He read 700 books in seven years. He studied under mentors like Jim Rohn, and today he's the founder or owner of companies with over $6 billion in annual revenue. If Tony Robbins can go from being an abused janitor with no college education to being one of the most influential people in the world, why can't you? The difference is he made the investment to constantly improve himself, and you haven't yet at that level. So I look at my channel as an example, my YouTube channel, and I've learned so much over the past number of years 
in confidence and growth and abilities and skills by consuming the content. Because I love the top 10 series and the Mentor Me series and the Espresso series. I make them for me and then I share them with you and thankfully you guys like them too and I can build a business off of it and keep pumping out more content. But it helps me. I've grown, I've learned. And one of the biggest moments that helped me realize how much I've learned is when I signed a three-year deal with Sage, I was working with Stephen Kelly, who was the CEO, and every month we'd be on a call. We'd be doing a hangout on my YouTube channel, answering questions from people. And I was driving with my dad, and I remember him asking me, how do you get the confidence to be on a call with Stephen Kelly and be seen as his equal all the time? And he wasn't asking me to put me down, he was asking me in, in, in genuine awe of, he was so happy for me that I was playing a bigger game. And it dawned on me that, he was right. The Evan of five years ago wouldn't have been able to do that. The Evan of five years ago would have felt less than. The Evan of five years ago would have said, there's no way I'm capable of doing that. And then when I'd signed the deal, I felt like it's great. I love Steven, he's, he's amazing. But I feel like I'm hanging out with Oprah and Kanye and Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and these super successful people and they're infiltrating my brain on a daily basis, right? A daily basis, three videos every single day on this channel. And so bit by bit, it pulls me up. Now I've recognized I still have a long way to go. I still have so much more to learn. I still need to believe in myself even more. And every time I consume more content, it allows me to grow my comfort zone a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more. And the funny thing is all of these moments are, are little tiny incremental parts of your growth. I couldn't point you to one point in my past where I said that was the moment that I changed. That was the moment that I had more confidence. But as I studied every day, every day, every day, I could look back three months, six months, a year and say, wow, I've really changed. I've really grown. I've really learned a lot. But in the daily from today to yesterday, I'd say I didn't grow at all. And so sometimes on your journeys, you're trying to learn and get better. You may feel like the growth is really slow on a daily basis, but if you keep going, you keep investing, you keep learning, you keep seeking out mentors, you keep trying to get better and improve. Not every day will be amazing, but if you try every day to get better and learn, I can guarantee you that in three months, six months, one year, when you look back of the person you've become compared to what you are right now, there'll be a big change. And that's because you continue to invest in yourself. So I'm going to give you a three step process to how to create a customized program for you so that you can become world class at the thing that you want to be world class at. Step one, decide what you want to be world class at. You could be world class at a lot of things with enough energy, effort, wisdom, pouring in to you, practice repetition. You can be world class at something, but what, what, like what in your core, what is the thing that you need to be world class at? What is the burning desire in you that you say, I want to be among the best in the world at what? Fill that in. What do you want to be world class at? Number two, immerse yourself in that environment. The fastest way to learn a language, the fastest way to learn Japanese is not from a textbook. It's not from going to classes. It's to go to Japan. You need to immerse yourself in the environment. Whatever the thing is that you want to be great at, the more you are around it, people who are doing it, people who are speaking it, people who are living it, the more it will rub off onto you and the faster it will rub off onto you. Now, it can be a, a physical environment or it could also be from the content that you're consuming. I get it a lot from my own YouTube videos because I feel like I'm around Steve Jobs and Elon Musk and Oprah Winfrey every single day. And the more you immerse yourself in that environment, the more their mindset, the more their motivation, the more their confidence is gonna stick with you to help you go be world-class at the thing that you wanna be great at. And then step number three is practice every single day. You need to practice every single day. It's not enough just to be around it. You need to practice, you gotta do. You wanna be world-class at something, right? That requires daily dedication. The reason why I got better at making my content, my videos is I've done 6,000 videos. A thousand videos aren't even public on my channel. We've thrown away more videos than most people ever create on their channel. And it's not because I'm amazing. Go back, like I encourage you, go back and look at my first videos. I sucked, it was brutal. It's because I said I want to be great at this thing. And I surrounded myself with people who could help push me and I could learn from. And then I practice every single day. The reason why I pass people who I consider to be a lot better than me at this is because I put in more work. Because when people had a hard time finding time to make one video a week, I was doing three a day. And if you take that same approach 
If you take that same mindset of, I'm just gonna outwork everybody around me, I'm gonna outwork my competition, when they may have a hard time finding time to do that thing that they need to get better at once a week and you're doing it three times a day, you will blow past people who are more naturally talented because you have put in the work to get good at your skill. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video, I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. To see my recent interview with Mel Robbins one-on-one, -on -one, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. I hope your business goes bankrupt, Evan. Evan, you're a terrible person. I spent the first 40 some years of my life trying to be somebody else. I'll give you guys a secret way